Hello, my name is Jay Housen, and I am a physicist at the Naval Air Warfare Center, Patuxent River. I work at E cubed, which stands for Electromagnetic Environmental Effects, and I work specifically for EMP testing, which is the electromagnetic pulse. I, being a physicist, love high voltage things, and that's how I got into this line of work. So today I'm going to talk to everybody about electricity, electricity safety, and show you some cool demonstrations utilizing Tesla coils. My associate, Bailey, here is going to help me out today. Bailey, can you tell us a little about yourself? Hi, I'm Bailey. I am in fifth grade. My mom works on base, and I really enjoy science. Awesome. That sounds great. I'm glad to have you here today, Bailey. So for my first demonstration, I'm going to talk about the relationship between voltage, current, and what sort of types of electricity are safe or unsafe. So you may have heard that the analogy, it's the volts that jolt, but it's the mills that kill. What this is referring to is the voltage might just give you a little startle, but the milliampers or the current is, gonna, is what's going to kill you. And I'll prove it to you today that I can actually elevate myself to close to 50,000 volts with little to no effect to me physically. I can also share that voltage a little bit with my associate Bailey, and we'll light up some light bulbs and do some other cool things. This device is a Tesla coil. It's in this form factor so that you can hold onto it and use it to probe things in a laboratory setting for testing whether you had a high vacuum or you're maybe you're testing dielectric breakdown or something like that. It's very useful, but I use it primarily to do demonstrations like this because it is small and portable. When I turn it on, you notice you hear that sound very quickly. And also, you can see I get a pretty decent arc out of it. This will produce about 50,000 volts when it's unloaded. So once I start putting a load on it, the voltage will decrease. But you can also do some other cool things like this. So if I get my fingers near there, you can see these are surface tracking arcs across the insulator. What's going on there is the high voltage electricity from the tip is trying to reach into me. And it's doing that by tracking across the surface of the insulator to my fingers. Now that's just touching the arc. What about grabbing the whole thing? Think I can do that? No. No? Ready? I'm going to do it anyway. No, go. Oh. Here I am. So how many volts am I at right now? 50,000 volts. It's actually probably a little less than 50,000 volts because once this thing gets loaded, in this case loaded by my body, it drops the voltage output a little bit. But still, I'm floating here at 50,000 volts. How am I safe? No idea. Well, I'm safe because I'm not grounded. You see, voltage also can be called electric potential. You may have heard the term potential energy. See, potential energy isn't necessarily energy that's doing anything. So without a current for this voltage to flow between me from this to ground, for instance, it's not doing any work. And I can just float here happily at 40 or 50,000 volts all day with no ill effects to my health. It would be only when I touched something that was grounded that I would potentially pose a problem. Now, it's important to note that this device can't physically produce enough current to hurt me anyway. So even if I were to accidentally touch something, it wouldn't, it wouldn't hurt. Now, I definitely don't recommend you try this at home with devices like an outlet, because it, it can hurt you. And I'm a professional, so I know what I'm doing. Now, Bailey, what do you think? Could I share some of these electrons I currently have all over my body with you? Sure. Sure. You think that's I safe? Could I share with you my electrons? Maybe. OK. Ready? Want to try? We're going to put out our hand like this. And I'm just going to share a little bit of electrons. I heard it. What did it feel like? It felt like I just got shocked on the slide. Shocked on a slide. That's a pretty good analogy. So when you slide down the slide, you build up a little bit of a static electricity, mm -hmm. and it shocks you when you're going down. Want to try again? Ready? So you can sort of feel a little bit of a pop. Kind of cool, right? Mm -hmm. Now I could share these electrons with you another way. I have here a fluorescent tube. Now, disconnecting from the Tesla coil, the fluorescent tube, if I just arc to it, or get near it even, you can see that it lights up. What's going on is high voltage from here produces an electric field. That electric field reaches out and physically excites the gases inside the fluorescent tube. Now, if I arc to it, it's going to flow all the way through. 
And maybe if you were holding on to the other end on the glass, I could just give you some electrons through this tube and we could make it really bright. What do you think? Okay. Okay. So see, there's my hand. You can tell that I have some voltage because I'm able to light up the fluorescent tube without even touching it. And once I touch it, it gets a little brighter because I've got better contact with the gases. Now you try. And there you have it. I'm passing Bailey some current. And she's discovered just now that if you grab it in different places, the current only flows between two points on the tube. What does this remind you of, Bailey? Sort of like a lightsaber, maybe? Kind of. Or kind of like a glow stick, maybe, even. A giant electric glow stick. Cool. Yeah, because only the part that has the glowy stuff in it will glow up. Because have you ever got one of those dead glow sticks? With, the, uh, with all the air bubbles on one side. They are pretty cool. All right. You ready to let go? Yeah. Oh my gosh, it scared me. You heard a little bit of buzzing there, didn't you? Yeah. So that was the corona coming from the glass. A little bit of electrons were leaking across the surface of the glass and going to your hand right after you let go. You're like, no, don't let go. It made a little go. buzzing sound, didn't it? Yeah. Pretty cool, right? So here I have a slightly larger Tesla coil as opposed to the handheld one. What's unique about this one is that it is solid state, whereas the other one worked using a little tiny spark gap inside of it. Uh, what do you think of this larger Tesla coil, Bailey? I think it's larger. <laughs> What's the deal with the point, though? Well, as it turns out, when you're dealing with high voltages, electrons like to leak out everywhere into the air. So we put a donut on it like this in order to protect this part of the Tesla coil from the electrons leaking out and forming arcs. But also, I would like the arcs to occur exactly where I want them to occur. So I installed this thing called a corona point, which is basically just a sharp point which encourages the electrons to leak from right there. And when I turn this on, you'll see that the electricity will only come out in, from that point. Is that one dangerous? No, this one also is not dangerous. The current is actually lower on this one. There's a relationship between the input voltage and the output voltage. This one will produce about 250,000 volts, but because power is fixed, I necessarily have a much lower current. Hmm. So I guess I'll power this up and then... Whoa. All right. So right now I've got this thing operating at 20 hertz. What it's doing is producing 20 pulses per second. And we can see those if I just let it arc right here like this. Now, you'll notice that as I make the arc smaller, the sound goes away. It gets a lot more muted. And the reason is that every time this thing produces a pulse, it produces a pressure wave. And these pressure waves are what your ears detect in the form of sound. Now, when a bolt of lightning occurs in the sky, you would also detect a pressure wave. And you would know that as the rumble of thunder. You've mm -hmm. heard thunder before. You've seen lightning before, right? Yeah. So when one big bolt comes out, you would hear a really loud, sharp bang. True? Yeah. And when it's more of di diverse across the sky, you might hear a longer rumble. Hmm. Sound about right? Yeah. So that's just because of all the little different instances of arcing that's occur. With a cloud-to-ground lightning, you have just one instance where it is a loud impulse. Whereas a cloud-to-cloud, -cloud, you've got lots of little tiny charged areas that are breaking down at different points in time, which is why it sounds like more like a rumble. Like a ton of sparks? Exactly. Another thing I noticed was when you had that on, you could actually see on the light bulb, it was like flickering. Yep, the light bulb will flicker too. That's due to the electric field surrounding the donut here. And I can turn this back on and we can look at that a little bit more. So you note that it flickers. I can arc to it and it might flicker a little brighter. If I get further away, it's still flickering. I was about to say, it's not even touching it though. How is it flickering? So, the electric field from this device extends from this donut out to infinity. And when the electric field intersects with, say, this fluorescent light, a little tiny bit of current is induced on the light. This is due to this being an alternating current device, and when you have an alternating current pushing electrons back and forth through the air, then, then it can excite things like the gases inside the tube. Hmm. Pretty cool. Could that possible? If you had a big enough one of those, could you possibly like make a whole house, all the house lights do that? 
I could. In fact, one of my friends has a very large one of these, and the lights in his house do flicker when he runs it, which is pretty cool. So what did you notice, Bailey, when this was going at 20 hertz? Did you hear anything unusual? Yeah, I kind of heard like the thunder sounds. Kind of like thunder sounds. Okay. Well, what happens if I change the frequency a little bit? Let's see if you notice something else. It's louder sounds. <laughs> louder sounds, but it changed its, pitch. changed its pitch. Exactly. So it turns out that when your ears interpret sound, you can hear differences in pitch, even though this is not producing a true tone as like a piano would, for instance. This is still producing individual pulses that are very, very small, but your ears will interpret that as a sound that has pitch to it. And I can keep going here. Really high frequencies or really low frequencies. It sounds kind of like, like a brrrr, like a, like a trombone. trombone. Yeah. Yeah, really cool trombone. Now, do you think I could play music with this, Bailey? Not possibly. Not possibly? <laughs> well, I'm going to blow your mind here. This little device here has a microcontroller in it. And on the microcontroller, I've pre-programmed various rates of this thing operating into it. So I can play different tones and different rates of tones at the same time. And of course, if you can do that, just like reading sheet music, you can play music with it. And I'll just turn this on and we'll just demo that a little bit. When there's no arc, you can barely hear it. Also, it does not have to be a That's crazy. Pretty awesome, right? Yes. So, as far as playing the songs in this thing, as my imagination, as long as I can program it, I can make it do whatever I want. That sounds like a lot of work and a lot of programming. It is a lot of work and a lot of programming. And a lot of time. Indeed. Now, how do you think this device works, Bailey? Any ideas? Um, be honest, no. Be honest, no. Have you seen a Van de Graaff generator before? Have you ever heard about one of those mm. big ball hair stands up? I've seen the like yeah. rubber balloon on you and do that, yep. but no, I haven't heard of the big ball thing. So a Van de Graaff generator is a direct current device, and what it does is it builds up a charge, and then you touch it, and it takes away all the charge all at one time. This is an alternating current device, and what it's going to do is it's going to take charge and it's going to push it up, and it's going to pull it down, and then it's going to push it up again and pull it down again. It's just going to keep going over and over again. Is that what makes the arch? That is sort of what makes the arc, yes. It is that property, and in fact, the frequency of oscillation here is so high that the arcs are physically a lot longer than they would be for the same voltage if it was a direct current, which is pretty awesome because I can produce bigger arcs with less effort. Pretty cool? Mm -hmm. Now, the intrinsic operation of a Tesla coil is due to a process called electrical resonance. Do you have any idea what electrical resonance is or resonance at all, for instance? Um, no. I'm going to explain it, and you're going to go, I do know what resonance is. So right here I have a pendulum. A pendulum is simply a bolt hanging from a string. Now, much like the Tesla coil, there's a way for me to store potential energy in this pendulum, and there's a way for me to store kinetic energy. In the Tesla coil, I would store potential energy in the form of voltage in this primary capacitor right here. With the pendulum, I would store potential energy by just simply raising the pendulum up, and of course, when I let it go, it oscillates at a certain frequency. Now, when it falls through back to equilibrium, it's going to have a certain velocity associated with it. This velocity could be analogous to the current flowing in the Tesla coil. When this capacitor discharges, when I release the pendulum, the current flows through this coil. And this coil oscillates at a very specific frequency that resonates this free oscillating coil system right here. Now, much like the pendulum, I don't really have a way to do a free oscillating system, but I can demonstrate the process of resonance. If I get the frequency wrong, i.e. a lot higher, you can see the pendulum doesn't really work very well. Likewise, if I have the frequency lower, I can sort of get it to move, 
but it doesn't work quite right, as you can see. But if I get the frequency of oscillation just right, it's very easy to see that you can get a very large oscillation with very minimal effort from my hand. Now, what does this remind you of, Bailey? Swing. A swing set, exactly. See, you've been doing a resonance for probably a good chunk of your life. <laughs> when you kick your feet on a swing at just the right time, you inject energy into the pendulum that is the swing. And when you do it just right, you go higher and higher and higher. So you mm -hmm. already were an expert on Tesla coils, even before coming here today. How about that? Yeah. I hope that you all enjoyed learning just a little bit about electricity. It's all really cool. Um, being a physicist, I really enjoy my job, and I really enjoy uh, working with high voltages, and I hope that my passion for this sort of thing has uh, helped you to learn something today as well.